I don't know what it is lately, but every time I buy a Honda, it's absolutely Hi guys, Lee here, welcome back to the channel and you join me today as we're gonna have a look at another one of my purchases. Now this time, it's the little Honda Jazz we bought from auction a few weeks ago. Now we bought this from Aston Barkley, and we bought this from a group of other cars on the day. We bought three or four that day. The little Honda Jazz was a little cheaper of the bunch. Now I've got the car back here, and I have had a quick look around it already, and already had it in the workshop. Um, and to be honest with you, it's not looking too good. Now before I start explaining actually what's wrong with it, let's just go have a recap, go and have a look at the car, see what it's like, go for driving it, and then I can start going through what the problem is with this car and why this Honda Jazz has probably turned out not to be the ideal purchase. Anyway, let's go and have a look at it. It's here now, so let's go and have a view. Okay, guys, here it is, the little Honda Jazz we had out of the auction. 1.2 petrol on a 56 plate. It's done 91,000 miles, would you believe? It's quite low for a car that's, what, over 16 years of age. But like I said, it had scruffy arches on it. We'll get to them in a minute. Uh, we'll go round it quick first and have a quick test drive of it and I can explain to you what the issues are with this little Honda now to be honest with you the rest of the car bar the back end is actually quite straight We've got quite nice other than the clean up it's quite nice it's, you know it wants a number plate on the front obviously but really the rest of it it's not too bad lights could do with a little bit of a tidy up a little bit of compound pace just to smarten them up typical plastic lights they just fade a bit but um, a good rubbing down actually and a bit of compound pace will probably bring them back to life a little bit of mud on there it's been off on the drive back um, definitely could do with a couple of tyres on the front they are uh, pretty much on the bars set a wheel trim smarten it up quite clean on the wing on the door it's quite straight for the age of it got a little scratch there very very dull though and it's not very deep either so it probably will actually mop, mop, mop out or certainly would improve now this is where things go downhill is the state of these rear arches which are a little bit worse than I first thought now in the auction those of you who watched that video the car actually had these horrible monstrosities attached to them, like arch, like some sort of arch covers. Obviously to hide all the corrosion. Um, someone had basically just sicker flexed them all on and just basically just put them on to sort of tidy them up a little bit, which you get. Um, but the reality of it is, is that it's just completely corroded and got worse and worse. By the time I picked these up, these were starting to fall off anyway. Yeah, I just pulled them off because they looked horrible and they obviously want to see what's underneath all this corrosion because the idea was to obviously try and repair it a little bit. Uh, but I wasn't expecting it to be this bad. It's uh, bracket's completely gone there and then off up the quarter now. We've got nothing left to really bond to. You're going to have to put a lot of metal in there in filler to try and get that arch back to maybe build a shape to it. Uh, and it's not and it's not really beyond my capabilities to be doing that. Little bits and bobs, yeah, fair enough. I've you know, tried, tied up a few arches in my time, but I didn't expect it to be that bad. And then we've got corrosion as well inside this inner part of the arch. You probably can't see with the tire in the way, but we've got a big hold hole behind this back of this arch here and this cover. It's even worse on the opposite side. The tire's a little bit frayed on the back as well, but it's probably still just about legal. We've got some corrosion on the back there, on the tailgate. Could have done something maybe to improve that, but you know how far would you go with it? Number plate on the back's not great either. It's broken in the middle there and it's starting to fall off, so could do with a number plate on the back. Arch on this side even worse than the than the pack driver's side. Again, it's had that horrible cover on, which I pulled off, and it's just all flaking away. It's just nothing left to weld to. And also you've got a great big hole as well underneath this cover. If we pull this cover back, it can it's probably the hole's probably what a good two or three inches. The time you've got a grind into that, you end up with a hole probably the size of your fist um, at least. And you've got a good, 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 old, good old bit of welding there to get that right, back right. And the sill's also going at the bottom as well. So a lot of welding, a lot of bogging up and filling, uh, a lot of work to do for very little return really um, for the amount of effort you have to put into it. Yeah, I mean, that's starting to go on the bottom of that sill as well. Time took a grind to this, you're going you're gonna to be even worse. It's a shame, really, because the rest of the car, look at the doors, it's actually quite straight. Other than a wash and a clean-up, there's no scratches, it's got no dents. And it's done 91,000 miles. It's just the corrosion has just completely killed this car off. Um, and it's a great shame, really, because these are worth a little bit of money in half decent nick. I'll show you internally, it's not even bad inside. Quite clean. No rips or tears in the seat. It's all right. 91,590 miles. On the button. What is that bleeping noise? There we go. Stereo. Got crazy stereo system in it. Android stereo. Probably worth more than the car. Um, I wonder if that works or not. We'll press the button and find out. I said it's... Um, 
no warning lights on the dash at the moment or anything like that. It's, uh, sounds all right. We have got a faulty handbrake, so we'd have to obviously look at that. And it also has got some other brake issues as well. I noticed uh, when I pulled it off the uh, recovery truck that it, uh, it's got a bit of grinding going on. Inside the rest of it, like I said, it's pretty straight, to be honest, you're pretty clean. Um, yeah, it's a nice old thing. Ooh, it's got the internet on this uh, Android. I wonder if that actually works. It's in Polish for some reason, so it's obviously had a Polish owner. But, um, oh, there it does, yeah, look at that, Google. Nice touch. Probably, that kind of thing probably is worth more than the car. But in seriousness, it's a shame this, because actually, it sounds all right. Anyway, let's go for a drive a bit. We might as well while we're here, uh, and then we can go through what it actually needs doing to this car. Okay, we're all rigged up. Just notice as well, the seat belt, need a new seat belt. That's chewed up there. Great big tear in that. It's no good, so you have to put a seat belt on it as well. So we're on a seat belt, pair of arches, lots of welding, a couple number plates. And I bet you the list is going to grow a bit, so we're going to need to do to this car. It's not got a bad clutch on it, the clutch is nice and low. Setting off in first gear, and that's always crucial in a Jazz, because they do suffer with noisy, whiny boxes, particularly in first and second gear. So, like I said, just put your foot down, listen to the gearbox, actually as sweet as anything. It's probably got change to the second, no noises, so we know it's got a good box in it. Gearboxes in these are really common for failing, and they're a good few hundred quid to get a replacement box for it. Then you labor on top, it's quite an expensive fix. They're pulling off now anyway, Engine's nice and peppy, as they are. A little 1.2 engine in these, they actually drive really, really nice. Um, I quite like the engine and box setup in these. They do drive nice, the, the little jazzes. Like I said, they were 1.2 and 1.4 they did them in. There's barely any difference between the two engines, to be honest with you. Doesn't really make much difference, either one you buy. There's hardly any difference in horsepower, performance, MPG. There's not really much in it, to be honest. It doesn't really matter which one you buy. Now, the brakes on these car is not great. Um, Pressing the brake down now, we've got horrible noise coming from the back. Um, I suspect we're going to need discs and pads on there as well. It, it's, it's not it's not the best. Um, I did have a nose under it when it was on a recovery truck. It did look like the calipers were a bit iffy on the back as well. Um, I could see that one of the handbrake sort of caliper the relievers release wasn't one of the lever releases wasn't back properly, um, and the pistons look quite far out as well. So I suspect you're probably going to end up putting calipers and distant pads on the back of this. They are really common for jamming up. But set aside the braking issues, um, the car itself and the engine and box is performing as it should. Okay, right, pull over. I've had enough of that now. Um, right, so what to do with this little jazz? To be honest with you guys, it's not worth fixing. Um, I think you could probably tell us from the walk round. I've probably bitten off more than I can chew with this one. Um, look, the reason why I bought it was it sounded pretty cheap. And to be honest with you, I always knew it would probably scrap out for pretty much what you paid for it or not far off that. Um, so I thought it was worth a gamble. But I wasn't expecting the arches to be that bad. I knew obviously had them covers on it. I knew they were quite rusty. But I was hoping maybe they weren't be that bad when literally they were just falling to pieces in my hand. Um, there was just a bit of service corrosion. We could have tidied them up. I've done a few tidy up jobs in the past where you flick them off and you can just sort of usually just sort of fill them up, make them a bit smarter, just to improve them a bit, um, and then just sort of flick can job them. Just, you know, just a general tidy up. Nothing, nothing fancy, nothing professional, but just as a cheap runabout for someone just to turn it around, flip it and fling on um, and get it kind of right. I thought we might have a chance with this one. Uh, but it's not to be, to be honest, because that is way too much work to do. To fix them arch, you're going to have to be fabricating quite a lot of metal in there to make up a new arch, and then obviously filling it and getting it all right, and then you've got to weld the bottoms and the sill line. It's just way too much for me to get involved with. And then time you throw in rear calipers it needs, it needs discs and pads on the back, number plates, a couple of tyres. You know, you, you could throw in then, you know, another easily, another couple of hundred quid easily. I mean, the calipers aren't that dear, actually. The calipers, I did have a look, because what weighing it all up. I get a set of calipers brand new for 85 quid, which is quite shock, which surprised me actually. Distant pads about 50 quid, a couple of tyres. So you will get into a couple of hundred quid on this time you've sort of on the mechanical side of it, time you've got it right for an MOT. But it's the it's the arches. It's too much work. You've been doing it for days. We haven't got the time, um, and it's not worth fixing. And even at the end of it, doing all that, it's not going to be right. And in, in a year or two, someone will be back here again with more welding to do. It's just not the right car to be fixing this one. It needs to go 
uh, unfortunately to, for breakage. I think that's probably the best place for it. I think it's had its day. Now this is my second Honda on the channel we've had and both of them have been rotten as a pair. Maybe someone's telling me something that uh, I shouldn't be buying Hondas. What will we actually get back for this car? That's a crucial thing. Well, I had a quick look online, scrap yards, 386 quid is where it's at. That's the most I can get back for it in scrap. The car cost us 425. So we've only lost a tiny bit of money. What, less than 40 quid we've lost. So I'm not particularly worried about losing a little bit of money on it. And occasionally this happens. You know, you can't buy every car and make money on it. If, if you do think you can buy a car and every one you make money out of it, um, then you're deluded because it's, that's not how it works. You know, you, you, you might buy 10 cars and one of them will be a pup, a lemon, whatever you want to call it. And this is definitely one of those. It's um, not worth repairing. Uh, and we're going to lo lose a little bit of money on it, but it's less than 40 quid at the end of the day. So I'm not going to lose much sleep over 40 quid. Um, might nick the battery off it as well, switch that over for a dead one. By the time you take the battery into consideration, we're not really lost a great deal of money, to be fair. Uh, I know a few guys were mentioned actually when I bought this in the auction, they'll go, yeah, but don't worry about the catalytic converter. The catalytic converter is worth money on these. You're right, they are worth money on these. On the Jazz catalytic converters are worth a pretty penny sometimes. If they're still fitted to the car, this one isn't. It's not original. It's an aftermarket Cali converter on it. Someone's replaced. So there's no money in that either because if they had that been on the car, that would have got me out of this and probably made us a little bit of a profit as well. Um, so that's why I thought it was worth a gamble, worth a risk. But uh, yeah, it sounds low. Someone's beat me to that as well. So there's no money in the cat either. You can't win them all, guys. Um, you know, I'd rather be losing 40 quid at this end of the market than some of the guys who are buying really expensive cars. You imagine buying a 10 grand car and go down the road and you need a gearbox or something. You know, them, them lads, spare lad for that, spare a thought for those lads who are buying at that, that end of the market. I mean, I, I get asked a lot why I buy the cheapest, and it's because of this. Because, to be honest with you, you don't lose much money on them. If you get a bad car, you're not really going to lose too much sleep over it. You can just, the easiest thing to do sometimes is just scrap stuff or move it on in the trade. Um, and that's what we'll do with this one. They'll just move it on and move on to the next one. The, the next rock of cars you get in will make your money elsewhere so um you, you, over, overall you're always up and that's the only and that's the main thing in business it doesn't matter if you ha have a few bad days as long as the uh, good days uh, outweigh them so it's a real shame really for the jazz but unfortunately it's uh, it's not worth repairing as we say so uh, move on to the next car so thanks for watching this one guys please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so please check out my other videos and i'll see you all very very soon